Good evening. This is the Photopuncture and Light Therapy Education Series. We call Always Shine Your Light. It's a weekly webinar that we host. My name is Kay Aubrey Shemaine. I'm the owner and director of Grand Adventures Ranch, a holistic equine wellness center in Sonoida, Arizona. Tonight we're going to be talking about using light and light therapy to melt ring bone. And I'm using that term melt specifically because what we found is that when we use this protocol, it literally turns to jelly. It gets very hot, turns to jelly, and the body can carry it away. So first, what is ring bone? Ring bone is the osteoarthritis or calcification of the pastern and coffin joints in horses. It can be extremely painful and it's there for a reason. The body doesn't really make any mistakes. It's laying this calcium down because there's too much play in the joint or because the joint is inflamed. So we have two kinds of ring bone. We have high ring bone and low ring bone. And technically, even ring bone could happen up in the knees. It's simply calcification of the joint. But in horses, we most often see it down here in the, quote, ankle of the horse. Now, it happens for a reason. And there's probably as many causes for ring bone as there are people's opinions for the causes. But usually, it's because the joint has been overstretched or improperly used because the shoe is, the foot has been forced into the wrong shape by shoes or they have an extra couple hundred pounds on their back and they have to be stopping and spinning and torquing the leg, or they're landing from jumping, or even more often, high protein diets with not enough mineralization can cause a really high acid level in the body. And so the, it also causes the body to overreact and lay down calcification. So being overly acidic means the body can't heal itself from the fast stops and turns or the, the, uh, the different damage that's done to that joint and the body stabilizes it by laying down more bone. Now what we've always found for any problem, the best approach is three-pronged. We cleanse, nourish, and balance the body. Okay, so given if we can do everything we want, given everything possible, we're going to start with cleansing the body, okay? Helping to clean out the organs of elimination, helping the kidney to function better because the kidney balances the pH of the body. So maybe raw apple cider vinegar in the drinking water or cleansing items like zeolite, Vivo Zeo Complete, or Dynamite Excel. Those help to alkalize the body and keep those organs of elimination working well. Then we make sure we nourish the body. A major part of arthritis being part of being too acidic. Well, maybe they're getting too much protein, uh, you know, a high acid diet. So what we're gonna do is look for a, an alkalizing uh, anti-inflammatory diet. So grass haze, very little grain, if any. Lots of good, healthy fats. Um, and most importantly, really highly available, accessible minerals. We give four different free choice minerals to all of our horses and a daily vitamin mineral supplement, but those minerals are key in helping the body to balance pH and also to put down proper bone health, proper density, as opposed to just stabilizing a joint. If they need more calories, that diet gives them We'll up the calories with maybe Timothy pellets over uh, uh, Bermuda grass. And we'll add coconut oil or um, copra, which is shredded coconut meat. And that can help without all of the acid effects of the grain. Balance. Here's where the photopuncture and light therapy really come into play. Okay, you There's lots of things that come into balance for helping with ring bone. We have to stop what caused the imbalance in the first place. Proper trimming of the hooves, proper chiropractic, um, you know, balancing the body in all ways. But our particular tool is using photopuncture and light therapy to balance the body. So we scan the body to look for specific problems 
or we concentrate on balancing the equine energy points shown to be really helpful for ring bone and balancing the pH. And we'll go into those in a few minutes. So it's two separate things. We're doing photopuncture on the energy points, like doing acupuncture. And we're doing concentrated light therapy, here specifically with ankle wraps, that treat the joints that's affected. Our poster horse here is a wonderful horse named Ben. He is a large warm blood quarter horse cross who um, lives here close to us and his owner suffered a, a stroke a few years ago. And since having the stroke he really has very little use of his hands and doesn't have great balance. So he has to be belted into the saddle. He has like a seat belt for his saddle. But he loves to ride and Ben is one of those very conscientious horses that takes him out on the trail regularly. But during that time of carrying this large man, very unbalanced, and his feet had gotten quite long, he got severe ring bone in both front legs. So here he was. We actually saw him about a month before that, and they were even more inflamed. But like usual, I did a lousy job of taking pictures. So our first good picture is here on October 1st last year. And you can see that he is significantly deformed here and you can't really see it but there's a ridge here here and both legs plus he had some up under both um, ankles so you could see this from 10 15 feet away from him it was really easy but when you went in to palpate it was very very hard significant and he was limping uh, distinctly So we started, we, in addition to scanning and treating the points that we found, the owner started working with him and putting on dynamite balm, which is a, it's a petroleum-based ointment that gets worked into the joint. Any place that we find the uh, ring bone, we work the balm in, cover the entire area with plastic wrap of some sort, saran wrap, whatever, and then use the lights over that. We use the saran wrap just to keep the ankle savers clean so that they don't get all this grease down into them. And the interesting thing is that the, the more the body needs that balm, the faster it absorbs in. And we know we are making progress when the leg stays greasy for days at a time. If, uh, if there is still inflammation in an issue, it sucks it in very quickly. So the treatment time is for about 20 minutes. We leave those wraps on. Um, preferably at least once a day. This is the balm. It comes in, I think, a two ounce and a four ounce size. And a little goes a very, very long way. And here's a close up of the wraps over, um, you can see the plastic wrap sticking out the side. Now, in addition to starting this therapy, we also had her pull those shoes. And you'll see in the next one. Here he is 45 days later. This is about a month and a half. And he had, when we would go in and palpate, you could see that it had come down visibly. It had reduced quite a bit here. This is not nearly as swollen. This leg, which is not a great picture, was much better. Um, especially the lumps up, up, up on the higher joint had really reduced. And what was left was very hot and much like jelly. You could feel the heat in there. So after every session, she would also put on a cooling liniment. She'd wash his legs down, and she'd use a, a liniment like Sornomore or Absorbing, one of those, to cool the joint so that, again, the body wouldn't lay down more calcium due to the heat. Ben is now a much healthier working horse. He's still ridden all the time. And he did, you know, his lameness continued as long as we were reducing that uh, ring bone because his body had to keep rebalancing and figuring out how to balance itself without that stabilization. But he's come back to being a really useful horse. Here you can see from the front before that ring bone was jutting out significantly to the front and now he's coming straight down into the joint 
She continued this on for a number of months longer. I wouldn't say 45 means we were done. How long it takes to reverse the ring bone kind of depends on how much ring bone you have, what other things have you done to address the imbalance of the body so that you're not continuing to cause the ring bone, and how much you've changed the diet and so on so the body can rebalance more quickly. Also depends on do you do this every day. After the first month or so, Ben's owner really dropped doing it maybe two or three days a week, but she was still getting great results. And we came out about once a month and continued to do a full photopuncture scan and treatment. So going into the photopuncture scanning and treatment, it's not necessary that you have to do this to get rid of the ring bone, but I find that it helps A, take things faster, and B, keep the horse more balanced while it's going. So we start here with a couple of master points. Bladder 11, which is just there in front of the withers over the shoulder blade, that's a master point for all arthritis and bone issues in the body, whether it's a broken bone, uh, navicular bones that have been eaten away, any kind of bone issue, arthritis included, it's a master point. If you don't do anything else, massage your horse in that area to help them when they've got bone issues. And then gallbladder 25, which is right there where the ribs start to bet, turn down, right behind the rib cage, that is a master point for the kidneys. And it helps the kidneys to balance pH and that helps to lower arthritis in the body. So those two are a great starting place. And then we start treating points on the legs. There's four points, or, excuse me, well, five points, I can't count, on the front legs that particularly help with ring bone. The triple heater points up the very front of the leg, you can see triple heater one and triple heater four is there in front of the knee. Both of those are known to benefit arthritis and ring, uh, ring bone. Triple heater four especially is a great point for all forelimb pain. So if you have a horse that's limping, remember triple heater four. It's in that divot on the outside top of the knee. It's really great for forelimb pain. Down on the bottom, uh, outside of that front, um, excuse me, bottom inside of the front hoof is large intestine one. Again, another important point for arthritis and ring bone. And then our two heart points. The leg is reversed here. We're now looking at it from behind. And those heart points are directly inside the knee and above it, okay? So if you're just working right there inside the knee, you can make a lot of help with sedating pain and benefiting any kind of hoof problems, but especially the ring bone and arthritis down in those lower joints. We're also going to treat a few points on the back legs. The first ones, liver and gallbladder, those are our wood meridians. Those two meridians are very, very important for any ligament and tendon issues. So ring bone, side bone, all of that overplay in the joints. We want to help balance the, the uh, ligaments and tendons. Liver one is incredibly important for that. Gallbladder 44, sister point, both of those ting points down on the feet, really helpful. And gallbladder 39, which is just up from the hock on the, in the groove along that muscle, also really good for all severe arthritis. Um, and arthritis, a uh, ring bone is really just a, a severe form of arthritis. And the last few ones we have here are the inside of the back leg. We have the kidney three. So that's right down in that, in that groove as you come down in the hock. Put your hand over the hock. Your thumb is going to fall down into that divot on the inside of the leg. Spleen three is right down along the back of the tendon above the fetlock joint. And that's that same liver one point that we saw on the earlier chart. So those points help make a huge difference in uh, any kind of arthritic, uh, arthritic pain, not just ring bone, it could be hindquarters, and even though it's arthritis, ring bone is considered something in the front legs usually, not always, but anytime that you see that kind of arthritic, arthritic development, 
you can use those points. Don't worry if you don't remember them. We do have a ring bone reference chart that you can get at our photopuncture um, charts page. Not that this is the right chart, but <laughs> it's a picture of the kind of charts we have. And here's another success story of using the Cleanse Nourish Balance approach. Stetson is a horse that we started working with back in the uh, um, oh late 90s uh, or early 2000s. And uh, when our client adopted him, he'd been put out to pasture after being on the rodeo circuit. And he was a little stiff and sore, but he kept getting worse and worse. And they were dedicated to trying to correct this, so they had teeth done and chiropractic done, but he was still limping, and he, no matter what, whether they rode him or Liberty, he was limping. They had him x-rayed, they found very distinct ring bone, and this is what he looked like at that point. So they, he, the vet told him he'd never be ridden again. Just turn him out, he's going to be a pasture pony, you can't do anything about it. So they started working with us, um, specifically one of one of my students, Kate. Uh, she started detoxing him, putting him on the Dynamite Free Choice Minerals, and doing weekly photopuncture on him. As and during each photopuncture session, she also did the light therapy wraps. And he only got those once a week. The their budget was such that they couldn't buy the wraps, but she started doing this and using the balm. Within just a few months, he was completely sound. And in, in 2010, which was five years later, he was still out and sound. And today he's still being ridden. So Stetson was really one of our early, our early ring bone success stories. And since then, we've worked with many, many horses that have very similar stories. We do have a couple of specials for those people who want to do ankle wrap for uh, ring bone. The ankle wrap set is $700. We'll throw in the first tub of balm and the ring bone therapy charts for, and have it all there for $6.99. And if somebody wants to also try doing photopuncture with this with a photonic torch for those who don't already have any kind of light therapy set, we're adding in the torch and so on and even a better special so that it would be the wraps, the torch, the balm, and the therapy charts for $9.99. And those can be caught uh, purchased at our store. Okay, so I'm going to open it up now. Unmute everybody. Hello everybody. Aaron and MJ, you look to be both still muted. Anybody have any comments or questions from tonight's topic? Okay, I'm not that good. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> this is Karen. I have a question. Sure. Um, what do you think is probably the best way to detox? You mentioned, what, three different ways, but do you, is there one of those that you think is better, or does it depend on the horse? Or Well, kidneys, I always like to start with vinegar in the water. I just think it's a great, great thing overall to help, okay? And... My favorite overall detox product, bar none, is the Vivo Zeo Complete EQ. Because it is, it is the zeolites, it's a whole lot of anti-inflammatory antioxidants. Because a lot of times when you start detoxing, sometimes you feel worse before you feel better because of all the toxins that re are released. And so this helps to keep the, the uh, inflammation at bay. And it's, just, it's my go-to for all the different detox that I start. But there are lots of ways of doing it, you know, uh, betonite clays. Uh, one of the products I mentioned, Excel, is a combination of betonite clay and diatomaceous earth and some acid, excuse me, acidophilus and seabed extracts and things like that. It's another really good uh, liver cleanse. Uh, I had one mentor that loved flushing the kidneys with a can of old-fashioned Coca-Cola syrup. You know, once you let all the, the fizz buzz out, he would put that over um, some, some uh, bran or something for horses. And he felt that that did a great kidney cleanse. Uh, I muscle tested for it. I've only ever had one horse test for it. They tested just as strongly for the vinegar, and I decided I'd stay with that and not do all the sugar. But um, 
there are, I know that uh, there are other products out there. These are the ones that I have found that detox well and alkalize the body. And I'm a real big one for, for playing with the pH of the body, getting that back and more alkaline. Okay, was that the Dynamite product? The Excel, yes. It's called XL, EX, or just E X C E L. Okay. And we use it as a general detoxifier and warmer. And uh, they're, they're, they have another warmer called Herbal Tonic, which is like 30, 40 different herbs and, and so on. But we found that if we have a horse come in, we'll throw them on Excel every day, just a teaspoon of it every day for the first you know 90 days six months and it's a real gentle way to just support whatever else is going on very and and just very rapidly we have few, very few flies I have a lot of uh, rescue groups both dog and horse that we just suggest that they start them with the Excel they buy it in the 25 pound bucket it's really cheap to give compared to a lot of other things So if you're just, you know, if your horse doesn't have any issues, but you're just like wanting to, you know, make sure that they they're getting the best care, is that something you would you would give that horse? Uh, I would probably off and on. Like it depends on how long. If the horse is just new to me, I'm always going to do it. If they've been to me with me for quite a while and the and the free choice minerals have been available to them for quite a while. Maybe I'm going to do it for 30 days twice a year. Okay, and it so really kind of the free choice minerals would also. So I'm I'm thinking more of my horse that you know you know we show all the time and he's a you know a really athletic horse and I I just want to take really good care of him. Right. And and um, so I was thinking of the free choice minerals because he is you know and he stalled and. Uh, but I was, you know, just wanting to make sure we're all, you know, balanced and on, you know, on track and nothing. Right. You know, yeah. I don't think there's, there's nothing that stands out to me that is anything wrong with them, but it would just be nice to know that, you know, we have that covered. <laughs> right. Well, I, I have to admit, I am, I am particularly biased in this particular area. I think okay. all horses should get free choice minerals all the time. Okay. Okay. And especially since uh, all of our hay is grown on soil that is totally minerally depleted, right? Nobody's putting back manganese, magnesium, copper, zinc back into the soil. If they're fertilizing at all, they're just putting NPK in, you know, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. They're not putting back in any of the trace minerals and a lot of the macro minerals. So if a horse is out on a pasture and it's and the pasture is getting you know re, reconditioned regularly, maybe they don't need it. But the beautiful thing about the free choice minerals is if they don't need it, they just don't need it. It's not going to go bad. And I can honestly say we've never had a colic. My horses have half inch thick hoof walls. I mean my my trimmer comes over to do ten horses. He has to bring two to three rasps. Because the just the, the 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 feet are so tough, and I for your horse your horse's feet are tough. Is that what you all said? of our horses' feet? Yeah. All, okay. All of the all twelve right. horses that are with us have feet like iron, and um, we don't have we don't have any even on the horses that I did endurance on, we don't have any ring bone, and I'm a big woman riding needle horses. Okay. And this is an area, my trimmer estimates that 60 to 70 percent of the horses that he sees in this part of the country, because of our hard soil, because of the, because of the mineral deficiency of every horse's fed hay here, he says 70 percent of the horses he sees have to have ring bone. And, you know, so it's, it's chronic around here. It is just, it's out of control. And if, if, if we can, you know, have a way to offset that by having proper minerals out there, I spend maybe, and I, I would guess it's less than this, but maybe five bucks per horse per month in minerals, in free choice minerals. And then, um, you know, there's a cut. 
The stallion that we have is the one horse that's a, that's a caveat to that in that he runs his pen constantly. He's got a big like 100 by 150 um, pen. And, he, and anytime a horse moves, anytime he's always running and making sure everybody's okay, it's like his job. And he will eat either the two to one or one to one, which are the calcium phosphorus supplements. He'll eat as much as you put in that. If you put four cups a day in there, he'd eat four cups a day. He just loves that stuff. He thinks it's candy. And why? No other horse that I've ever known eat that much of it. But I think he sweats so a lot. I, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm on. I'm on the um, the dynamite website, and I don't see where. Where did I order the balm from last time? Oh, when from the uh, the wound care. Under oh. Under wound care. Okay. Okay. Is it's it on, your on your website. Oh no, it's you have to go to the dynamite website. Okay. And, uh, by the way, I have to say that balm is pretty amazing stuff. Oh, what have you done with it? Uh, well, I had um, a horse that his uh, elbows hat just keeps getting this like crusty, you know, just like humans get. They get crusty stuff on mm -hmm. their elbows sometimes, and it was just thick. And she's used all kinds of stuff to, to get it off and I think I used it I said well let me try it Cause I bought a can just to try it and see what it was like and I said let me just try it and see if it works and I think and about the day I did it it basically took all the crust off I mean it was like it's like an exfoliator or something mm -hmm. I don't know it just took and then um, I did it I think two or three times just lightly and then she went off to a show and I just saw him today and his elbows are like silk right now. They're beautiful. Oh, that's great. I, I know. And then her other horse is the one that had that really bad trailer accident where she basically got that big degloved her, the inside of her hawk. And it, when the, it kind of scabbed over, but then because they were showing, they were spray painting it white because their socks are white. And it just got this big crust on it. And the hair couldn't grow back. And so I was going to try the... Um, the balm with the with the lights to see if we could get the the uh, hair to grow back. Now she came to me really late in this process, so I don't know that we'll get to do that. But it basically stripped everything off of it, and it has beautiful pink, brand new skin underneath mm -hmm. it. And she was just like, you know, I said, well, you know, how did it go? Or is the hair growing back? And I said, well, the hair is not growing back, but it's it's much much healthier. And so, I mean, the, the, the skin underneath was just, you know, it, it just, I don't know what's in it, but it takes off whatever, like dead skin, dirt, and any, you know, anything. It, it, it is wonderful that way. We use it for all sorts of stuff like that. The, the, um, the, what's in it, it's basically an ointment that comes straight out of the ground that the Northwest Indians have used for hundreds of years. It, it, they just suck it out of the ground, melt it, purify it, run it through some filters to take any junk out, and pour it back in that yeah. tub. It smells like petroleum or, or shoe polish to me. I have no I idea what, the, what else is in it. I, I didn't think the smell was that bad, but it was kind of hard to get my fingers in it because it's really hard. In the and summer, I, it's easier. I, yeah, I'm sure it so when it softens up, but... Um, you know, I wore rubber gloves because it's kind of hard to get off your hands when <laughs> once you have it on there. Yeah, but see, but, I, I always work it into my hands because it's so good for bringing circulation in. So I figure my poor old hands have been beat up enough over the years. I just work it down in and make sure I don't have my wedding ring on because it, it'll it'll swell your slide fingers right up. off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, and uh, that's, that's the other thing. If you talk about circulation, she had um, what I would massage that, um, that uh, injury, and then she had a little cut on her right above her coronary band on the same same leg that some proud flesh has grown back on um, and I would just massage it in there and she's she's a kicker so it's been it was kind of hard for me to um, get the saran wrap around it and she would let me rub the ointment in but then to try and put the saran wrap in the light she's very protective of it and so um, I got some on my legs but nonetheless she just went to sleep when I would 
rub the stuff in, and it was like the most peaceful I've ever seen her. She just, you know, cocked her leg, and she let me just rub it and rub it nice. and rub it, and she really enjoyed it too. What you can do in those cases where it's very hard to wrap with the saran wrap, if you're, you can you can treat with just your your bio pack, and what you do is you put, uh, you put like a, a Ziploc bag over the end of each uh, cluster head. And that protects that from oh. the plastic. Or well, and you could put the plastic. <laughs> yeah, you, you just get the big cheap plastic bags, the clear, almost clear yeah. ones, um, at garbage can bags, and put them right yeah. over your ankle saver, and then put that around the leg so you don't have to do multiple stages. Well, this was a uh, was more the tendon wraps because it was all up and down her her uh, cannonball. Right, so. the tendon wraps are the easiest but, ones. You just you just cut a hole in the in the in the end of the bag so that you can take that's the, a good idea it, we this is what we did for you know every time that we were using those tendon savers on the mare that that did such a damage to her neck we were hooking mm -hmm. two tendon savers together so we just completely yeah i started covered doing them. that yeah it worked yeah. great and if she I think I'm, what i think i'm going to keep that second pair that um that ginger brought me the new pair because my other one was a little bit damaged and i was going to send that back uh -huh. but it's nice having two pairs of tendon savers, so I think I am going to send those other ones back, but have him fix it, because I started doing that too. I started, like, my horse, his shoulders get get sore, so I'll take the, the Velcro, and I'll strap it together, and then I'll just have them, this Velcro lay across his withers, and where the, the uh, tendon wrap just falls right in the middle of his shoulder, and just leave it there. Right. Yeah, those those things are those are awesome. They're just the right size. Um, I can wrap two around his neck. I can wrap two around his you know his shoulders. I mean, it's they're they're pretty handy. They're also real nice to have in your car if you've had to drive a long way and you need to unstiff yeah. your back. But um, <laughs> I was gonna say before I forget, on that spot where the hair has not grown back yet, make her get her own little tub of balm, and she'll put that on there every time she remembers when she's out with the horse. We, we've had, we've been able to get rid of, you know, old saddle scars, the white hair where saddles have rubbed. Yeah. And we've been able to put hair back on old areas of proud flesh. We've been able, it's great, but it takes a while because the, the body has to rebuild the skin. So just that with um, maybe do the lights like once a week or, or twice a week Not even something. that. Just, just throw balm <laughs> on it, quite frankly. Yeah, I, I told her I would, she'd have to buy it next because you said something about being a distributor, and I, I totally, I love that stuff. So, um, I'll tell that, you, anybody so with more than one horse should be a dynamite oh, distributor yeah. because it costs, it's a one-time $100 fee, and then you save up to 35% on everything you buy. Well, sign me up. <laughs> All right, well, we'll talk later. <laughs> Okay. Okay, guys. Any anything else? Did anybody have some other questions on Ringbone or what we were doing tonight? Um, I have another question. If if instead of using Excel, if you just use Bennonite clay, do you use it as a when it's still a powder, or do you get it wet like? Ah, uh, well, either either, either or. Um, I activate. I always activate the Bentonite clay if I'm going to be using it topically, or if I'm using it for a rapid uh, liver, liver cleanse. Okay. You want it, I keep it some activated around the house all the time because if, if um, let's say a, whole, a dog eats uh, rat poison or something, I want to get that in there and I have it already activated. But for it, putting into a horse's food for general liver cleanse, quite frankly, it takes so long to go through the horse's gut, it's going to get plenty of water and activate right there in the stomach. So I just put it in my house. So do you do like a, a teaspoon of that too, or is there more of that versus the XL? Not really. Anywhere from a teaspoon to a tablespoon, depending on what I'm trying to do. If I have ulcers, I'll probably move up to like a tablespoon. Okay. But for just general liver support, maybe a teaspoon, teaspoon, a heaping teaspoon every day. And you would do that for a month or 21 days? Or? On horses that I've worked with for a long time, yeah, three to four weeks every a couple times a year. We sometimes put them in cookies, we'll add them to our chia cookies and things like that. It's a good binder. When you have cookies that are not sticking together real well, you can throw the clay in there. Ah, oh, good idea. Make detox cookies as well. We have wormer cookies. We have 
fat bomb cookies. We do all kinds of cookies around here. I shouldn't say we. Karen gets all the <laughs> cooking chores. <laughs> Karen's the cookie lady. Okay, well, we actually have a, a young colt. We have the, the scan results of a young colt, if anybody wants to see them, what Karen went to work on this week. This is a young stud colt that, how old was he when he caught his leg, Karen? Two months. Two months? Two months old. Yeah, two months old, he got his leg caught in something. And he stood no there. You tell the story, Karen, go for it. So he just got his, got his leg in a no-climb fence. And they don't know how long he was there before they found him and got him out of it. Mm -hmm. Now when they, they go to work him, uh, the day after he'll come up lane. Okay, so even though he seemed to be fine, now every time he has some heavy work, like there's no inter intermediate work. He's still a very young boy. There's no intermediate work that happens. So he, all of a sudden he'll go out and he'll get worked, and then the next day he comes up lame. So the vet's diagnosis was OCD in the shoulder. And Karen went up and scanned him this, this uh, last Friday, and he only had about four points come up. Which was his bad leg, Karen? I'm hearing noise. What was that? Well, which one was his bad leg? The left front. Okay, so here we have his right front. And yeah, we have one point. The one right. point came up here. And here is his. Was this supposed to be the left front and it didn't reverse? Oh, no, this is sorry. Right. Sorry, it's the inside. This is the medial aspect of the leg, the inside of the leg. So on the inside of his left leg, two different points came up along the lung meridian here. Then the triple heater point right here at the point of the shoulder. So we only, you know, he's a young, overall healthy horse. No toxicity came up. This is a very holistic owner, so she feeds a really great diet. And we, so we didn't get any toxicity stuff. He hasn't really been worked or beat up, so there's not a lot of other things going on. We've got four points. Three that all indicate problems here on the left side, probably shoulder, and then that one that might show a little bit of stress from the body imbalance on the right side. And here they are just in the end. So here's a little picture of the the points after the scanning. Oh, we didn't add in the picture. Oh, there he is. There's a pretty little boy. I told her she should have put him in the back seat and brought him home with her. She didn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, that's one of the latest treatments and scans from this week. Any questions on that? Alrighty then. Well, nobody's getting it too much. Well, then we'll finish up early this this evening. If nobody has anything else they want to jump in about, or any questions about the upcoming class, or awesome guys. Well, everybody's done. We'll get up and go have dinner. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Gabe. Thank you all. Namaste.